Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint Let's Go Camping on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So this is a galaxy style technique in the sky and that is what we are going to be painting first on our canvas. So I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do this starry sky and I use two different tools that are not brushes to create this sky. I used uh, a sponge and a round makeup brush and both of those are going to help you achieve the smooth blended starry look in the sky. So basically the first step in this painting is to paint our entire canvas with this galaxy. And I used two different blues for this. I used Prussian blue and thalo blue. Both of those are very similar to each other. If you want to omit the Prussian blue because you don't have Prussian blue, you can just take that color out of the palette and use just the phthalo blue and titanium white. So we're gonna start out with our round mop brush. So this is actually a makeup brush. It's like an e.l.f. blender foundation brush. Works excellent for blending colors on canvas. And we're basically just going to apply the color to our canvas. So the, the darkest part of our painting is on the outer part. So the edge and the top part of the sky. So we're gonna take our Prussian blue, which is a very dark, deep color, and um, dip the brush in the water, by the way, and kind of squeeze your water out. So you want the brush to be wet, but not dripping wet. This brush holds a lot of water. So you wanna squeeze out that water to make sure that it's all dry, um, not dry, but moist. And then load it in your Prussian blue. And then we're going to paint in circular strokes just along the edges of the canvas. And that paint should go on there relatively fast because of the water on the bristles. So you really don't need a lot of paint on your brush. So I'm just holding that brush kind of vertically and doing circular strokes. I'm gonna go along the edge, both of the right and the left edges of the painting, but go in towards the middle a little bit. This Prussian blue is gonna be blending in with our phthalo blue, by the way. So the goal is to make the sky dark on the left and the right and bright in the middle. That's where our Milky Way is going to be. And we're gonna just go ahead and make this go all the way to the bottom of the canvas. We're not worried about the land or the trees or where the tent is going to go at this point. We're just painting a galaxy on our entire canvas. So I'm leaving the top middle part blank right now. So that's our Prussian blue setup. Without rinsing the brush, we're gonna grab our phthalo blue and do the same thing. I'm going to go close inwards a little bit more with this phthalo blue. And you can see how similar that phthalo blue is with the Prussian. That's why I said you can probably just do this with phthalo blue and not with the Prussian if you don't wanna go buy that extra color. And I'm just gonna keep going inwards. Remember this, the Milky Way in the center part is going to be super bright. So we're gonna leave that a big column of blank in the middle. And then without rinsing your brush, grab white and go ahead and fill your center. So this is going to appear as a light blue because of the blues that are still on my brush and that white is causing the blues to be lighter, but it shouldn't be super bright at this point. So basically that column part that we left blank in the middle, we're gonna paint that with this light blue color and we'll make it brighter by adding more layer on top of it. So I'm just filling the rest of this swirly blended strokes. It's going to look kind of choppy and circle-y and not, um, doesn't look like a galaxy yet, but we're getting there. We're gonna add some more layers and we'll be using our sponge next to help us create more of a galaxy look in the sky. So this brush was merely to just get that paint on the canvas fast. And so I'm gonna rinse that off, kind of dry it and set that aside and grab my sponge. This, this is just a circle craft sponge. There's nothing super special about it. And I'm basically just gonna take it and I'm going to just dab it kind of all over. And I'm doing that so I can just kind of blend some of these colors together. I'm not going to 
dab all of the painting. I'm just dabbing a lot of the parts where those colors are kind of meeting each other just to get them to blend. And it's also creating kind of a, a cloudy sort of technique with the sponge. And then I'm going to grab some white and kind of dab it on my palette a little bit. You don't want a big thick bunch of white on there because it might spread too fast and be hard to work with. So just a little bit of white at first and then go in the middle part where that bright Milky Way is going to be and just kind of dab a kind of abstract uh, sort of wavy piece of white that kind of goes from the bottom of the canvas to the top. And I'm just dabbing it, kind of blending it with those other blues, but keeping in mind that the center part is bright. And maybe there's some little pieces of white that don't blend and that's okay. I can even take my sponge and kind of twist it a little bit. That creates kind of a different effect when you kind of press and twist. And then I press and twist. So just keeping that center part bright. It's not pure white. It's more like a light, light blue. So there's not a lot of super bright pure white in that sky. And then if you want, you can use that sponge to blend in some more darker colors like right here. I wanted to take some phthalo or Prussian and just kind of like dab some darker areas in there. Um, a lot of this up here is going to be covered by trees, so we don't really need it to be blended perfectly. So down here, a lot of this is going to be covered by trees. And then our center part towards the bottom is going to be covered by ground and tents, so keep that in mind. Just keep in mind, try and make sure to keep your center part super bright. I added some more Prussian blue up here in the upper left. It's super dark color. Um, the painting is very dark at the top left and top right corner, so we want to make sure that sky back there is super dark. Going back here, the far right edge. So this creates contrast in our sky by having some super dark areas. And then we have our bright Milky Way center. I can bring it closer to the center, but I don't want to add any of that dark color right there in the center. We want to keep it nice and bright. So I'm going to do one more little set of white with my sponge. Um, when you switch to different colors on your sponge, you can move the sponge around to different areas and kind of fold the sponge with your hand, um, or you can wipe it off. So right here, when I did the white, I'm not using a part of the sponge where I used the blue. So I wanted that part to be white. I'm just adding another final light layer of bright white right in the center. But of course, it's a blending. It's turning into a super white blue, so it's not exactly pure white. I'm doing a lot of like pressing and turning. But right there in the center is our bright white. I can take that white and kind of extend it over in my dark area. I don't want to add too much of the lighter part in my dark area. When we are done with this, we're going to do the stars. So I used a toothbrush to splatter little star specks on the canvas. And what I do when I do splatter stars with a toothbrush is I take my finger and use that to apply the water. And then I use my finger to apply the white. That usually gives me the right consistency of water to white. You don't, and you want to kind of test it out on a different surface to make sure that it's not going to be too thick or too thin. If it was too thin, all that extra water will kind of mess up the painting. If it was too thick, you'll get big splatters that might look like shooting stars. Um, but when I did the um, star splatters, I concentrated a lot of the little specks in the middle and then kind of went on the outer parts as well. You basically want to splatter all over the canvas, 
but um, do an extra concentration right there in the center where your Milky Way is. So you just want to kind of splatter that close to the canvas and do extra stars right there in the middle. That'll help make that part look brighter. And we have a galaxy sky. So that's essentially how you paint a blue galaxy technique. So you can use that technique for other painting ideas you might have. We're going to move on to the next part of this painting and we're going to start establishing our ground, our tent, and our trees. So you saw me load my palette with Mars Black and that's the color we're going to use for the first layer of our ground. And our ground actually goes at an inward curve. So let's look at the final version of this. If you look at the ground, it goes kind of an inward curve area. Like our horizon line is curved a little bit downwards. It's kind of hard to tell, but that's what it is. And it's about three inches on each side. So that's that line that kind of divides the tree line and the ground. So we can um, estimate three inches. You don't have to do these exact measurements, but this is just given to you to help you see what I'm doing. So about three inches and taking our three quarter inch flat wash brush and I'm painting a curved area that kind of goes inward, downwards like a curve. So about three inches on each side. And this is just Mars Black. I added a little bit of water into that to thin it out and also to allow this to go fast and that paint flows a little bit easier when there's a bit of water in there. So I'm just filling that part in. We'll also be painting trees, but I'm going to do kind of a, a quick version of painting these pine trees. It would be very tedious to paint all these pine trees in a detailed way, but I'm actually just gonna take the tip of my brush and paint little vertical strokes, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So taking our Mars Black on the tip of this brush, this is still the three quarter flat brush, and I'm just dragging that brush upwards in a vertical direction. So just very, very gently um, holding that brush in a, um, just using the tip of the brush and doing little vertical strokes to create trees that are way in the distance. So I'm creating my tree line. So those trees are kind of overlapping our sky above our horizon line. And you wanna do a variety here. Some of those strokes are thicker, some are thinner, some are taller, some are shorter. That creates the illusion of our tree line. So we have trees that are various heights and some are closer, some are further, some are bigger, some are smaller. But overall, the technique is just using the tip of the brush to create vertical strokes all across that horizon line and they don't go up very high. I think the highest maybe is an inch high above the horizon line, but not super high at all. These are trees that are very, very far away. Next, I'm going to paint the ground. So under the tree line, we have brown sort of dirt that's going to be where our tent and our trees are gonna be. And I loaded my palette with burnt umber. So you can see that there's still a kind of a line of brown underneath our tree line. So I'm gonna take my three quarter flat and that brown, and I'm just going to pretty much do what I did with the black, but just kind of go over it with the brown. So it's going in a curved direction. And that's okay if that black isn't dry and if our brown is kind of mixing with our black, that's fine. Um, just kind of establish a horizon line below your trees and just gently left and right strokes, paint that brown all the way down. Our brown is lighter at the bottom because we have a lot of light going on at the bottom. You're gonna grab a little bit of white on the tip of your brush 
you're going to blend some white at the bottom and this might turn kind of gray because we have the black and the brown mixing together with our whites it's going to be kind of a grayish brown and we just want to lighten that part up right there at the bottom because that's where a lot of the light in this painting is hitting because we have string lights and that tent and so just making that part lighter so that it looks like it's closer this is a good time in our painting to kind of take a break and come back because we want this to dry. So go ahead, take a break, come back. This all needs to dry because we're going to be drawing our tent next. So because this is a dark background, I will be using a white chalk pencil to draw our tent. And let's look at our final version of this painting. So our tent is in the very center. So I have the same amount of space on the left and the right. Uh, the tent is, if I were to measure it, it's about six inches wide. And you don't have to do these exact dimensions, but I'm giving you these so you can kind of get an estimate on how we're going to do this drawing. And it's about three inches high from the bottom to the top. And it is offset from the bottom of the canvas. So if I were to measure from the bottom to the um, bottom of the tent, it's about one and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few marks on my painting. I'm gonna measure where that one and a half inch mark is and make a little dash line so I know where this tent is going to be. And it's about three inches high, so I'm gonna make a mark three inches above that. Again, these do not have to be exact. I'm not being super precise with my measurements. I'm just getting an estimate for the size of the tent. It's about six inches wide, so I'm gonna take my ruler and do a six inch horizontal line on the bottom mark. Try to make it centered, but if it's not perfectly centered, that's okay. Try to make it horizontal and parallel with the bottom of the canvas. So now we have kind of an estimate for how high and how wide our tent is going to be, and we can start filling it in. So I'm gonna start by doing our triangular front part of our tent. And I'm just going to draw a triangle piece, not on that entire line because part of that line represents the side of the tent. So maybe about halfway across that line, doing a triangle. And the lines on the side of the triangle kind of curve inwards a bit. And then our line on the top that's going to the side um, let me show you with my T-square. It's not a horizontal line. It goes kind of diagonal. So this is not horizontal. It kind of goes diagonal upwards a bit. And then our side piece. So this, this that line is about three inches, a little bit less than three inches. Mine ended up being a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Um, I can cut part of it off a little bit. And the side line that goes diagonal, it kind of curves. So those lines kind of curve inwards, they're not straight. And then this line at the bottom is also not horizontal, it goes kind of diagonal, but it's parallel to that top line. This piece on the bottom, bottom front is horizontal. And then our little opening. So I did a, like a little triangular isosceles triangle right there for the opening of the tent. I'm just going over my drawing and sketching it. This chalk will erase. And when we paint it in, we can always adjust our shape. Sometimes our paint goes a different direction than what our drawing did. So this is just a guideline. You should have enough room on each side of the tent for trees. Um, we're going to go ahead and paint our tent in next. So I used a couple different colors for the tent. I used cad yellow medium and cad red light. If you don't have cad red light hue, you can use any red. Um, it's kind of an orangish, orange sort of tint of 
red so you can also use orange for this you can also change the color of your tint i recommend something bright and a warm color so that it contrasts against our cool background so we're going to start by using a 12 bright brush this is just a small flat brush so it doesn't have to be this exact brush just find any brush that's small and flat we're going to go ahead and paint our tent white first so in order to give it that bright glow we need to add a layer of white to it first so it shows nice and bright so i'm going to paint the side of the tent first i'm going to do this with full width strokes that are going in the direction of the side of the tent so i'm going to paint my strokes so they're kind of curved and going in that diagonal direction kind of short strokes um you don't have to apply 100% coverage. So if you have a little bit of sky showing through, that's okay. And you can also use the tip of your brush to outline the shape. So at the top, I made that the direction go in that sort of horizontal direction, but then the rest of it is in the diagonal direction. And then for this side of the tent, I'm gonna use the tip of the brush to outline my shape. So the outer parts of that shape, including the opening using just the tip of the brush to loosely outline that and then I will paint it in. So I'm leaving kind of a gap where that front is and where the side is. So I'm letting that sky show through so that I can see the division of where the front is and where the side is. But I'm making, I'm using mostly the tip of the brush to fill that in. I can use the width too, but it is a, a smaller area. Um, but same thing, just filling that in with the white, leaving that opening and then without rinsing your brush, grab your orange color. I'm just going to call it orange from now on, even though it says CAD, right, CAD Red Light. So I'm taking my orange and starting at the top, and I'm just kind of dragging it down. Didn't rinse my brush. It'll turn a light color, and that's kind of the point. So it, it um, will show up bright. If it's turning too light, you might want to let this dry and then do this step. Um, but mine is drying relatively quick. And then grab your yellow. So basically we're going to take the, the orange and it kind of blends to a yellow on the side and then it gets back to like the reddish orangish color at the bottom. So it's kind of bright in the middle part of the tint and then the darker part at the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to wipe the brush off but not rinse it. Grab my orange color and blend that orange at the bottom up into the yellow does not have to be a perfect gradient. You don't have to over blend it. Dragging that up into the yellow. Then I'll use the tip of the brush to kind of outline the bottom part and drag it up a little bit more. And then we're gonna need to paint the front of the tent. So I'm going to grab the orange for the front and Go ahead and the same kind of way I painted it in, use the tip of the brush to kind of outline it. And then you can fill it in using the full width of the strokes. So this piece has a little contrast. It stands out from what's to the right of it. It's kind of lighter to the right, but right here it's a little bit darker, so that stands out. And I left that opening part so you can see the background color showing through and it created a line for me. I didn't have to paint that dark line in. And... I did a little bit more yellow over on the left. I'm just filling it in, kind of letting that yellow and red combination, yellow and orange combination blend gently on the canvas. I'm going to go back over here on the right, add a bit more yellow in there. You, so you can adjust your tint if you want it to be more of a yellow color or more of a orangish color. I'm going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and I want kind of more of a brighter glow on the side of the tent, the top side of it. I'm dragging some white in there over here too. Just going to drag some white in there, but try not to over blend the white. This is going to brighten your tent up a little bit more. Just gently dragging that white in there. And then I want to do some darker shadowy areas. So without rinsing the brush, I grabbed 
black and kind of wiped it off because I don't want too much black on my brush here. So kind of dry brush style. So wiping off the paint to make sure it's very dry. And I'm going to drag the black from the bottom upwards to make this kind of darker and more shadowy. It gives it some contrast. If you don't like how this looks, you don't have to do this step. Just dragging that black down, up, not trying to cover all the orange and yellows. I want just kind of um, shaded. And I'm just gonna go back in with orange and apply that orange a little bit over my black just to kind of let that blend in with more orange. And I'm going to set my flat brush aside and grab a number four round brush. So there's a, a few black lines on our tent. We want to go ahead and define the opening part. So I'm going to take my round brush, load it with black, and paint the opening. But there's also a line that kind of extends a little bit higher for the opening. And just loading that black on the tip of the brush because we need thin lines for this. I'm going to gently outline the left part so we have kind of the, the strings that are anchoring the tent and the far right piece and the piece that's on the right part of the front part of the triangle. That line extends downwards to the ground so like that it's anchored, the rope is anchoring the tent to the ground. On the left part and right part of the door, we have two more lines, two more rope lines that extend from the top and outwards a little bit to the ground. Next, I'm going to switch back to my 12 bright brush. So that's that little flat brush. And we want to do just a little bit of highlight on the tent, but then we're also going to paint some highlight on the ground. So I'm gonna grab some titanium white. I'm just gonna outline the top part of the tent. We're going to have lights that are kind of glowing. So we want a little pop of white over here at the top, a few little strokes at the top, nothing too significant, just a few pops of white right there at the top. And then we have a lot going on on the ground. We have a really nice glowing area. Um, so I'll be using the colors that are on my palette here. I'll be using the burnt umber, the yellow, the white. So let me show you what we're talking about here. We have really short strokes that are going in a horizontal direction that has all the colors in the tent and it's glowing on the ground. So loading the yellow, the, the orange and the brown and the white on your palette and just very gently doing left and right short strokes to let that tent look like it's glowing on the ground. So I'm grabbing some orange here, doing some short strokes of orange. You don't have to over blend this, just kind of let it mix on the palette or mix on the canvas. Um, we have a lot of dark ground still showing through. So this is almost just a layer of dry brush over the brown that's already on the ground. Um, it's kind of more shadowy on the right part of the tent, but it's got more of a glowing color in the front part of the tent. So I can extend this a little bit further out to the left. So again, I'm just using the white, the, the orange, the brown, the um, yellow on my palette. So when I go to reload, I'll just grab different amounts. So that time I grabbed brown and white, a little bit of orange, just kind of mixed that on my palette and then applied that to the canvas. So lots of different colors. Try not to over blend your colors. If you want more yellow in there, you can grab more yellow if you want more of a yellow glow. But the trick is to just not over blend it. We want to see a mix of all those colors. Um, and it, even though it's a glowing part, it's still not brighter than, than the tent. It's kind of a translucent layer. So we don't want to lose our tent by making this super bright and it looks like the tent is just, that's part of the tent on the ground. It should look like a glowing sh reflection. Um, so still bright, but not as bright as the tent. If you have lines, like chalk lines, you can go ahead and erase that. I didn't show me uh, erasing that, but I just took the eraser that's on my chalk pencil and erased any chalk lines that are still showing through on the tent. 
We're going to be doing our trees next. So I'll be using the flat brush, the little flat brush, the 12 bright. And you see me loading it in the water and kind of watering down my Mars black a little bit. So we have a bunch of trees, very tall trees. Uh, we want two very large tree trunk trees on the left and the right of our tent. And we may have room for a few smaller, thinner trunk trees. So I'm going to start with our tree on the left. And the base of this tree is a little bit below the front of the tent. So you can see that base is maybe a quarter inch below the bottom of the tent. So it's not lined up with the tent, it's a little bit below the tent. So it's in, kind of in front of the tent. Um, our trunk needs to start out wide. So the width of the trunk is about quarter inch wide, about the width of the a brush that we're using maybe I would say it's more like a half an inch to three quarter inches wide and then it gets thinner as we go up so we can use more of the tip of the brush so solid black we don't need to worry about the brown just yet and I'm going to use the tip of the brush so our branches are um, going at an angle but they're still branching out so use the tip of the brush to create the branches to create those thinner lines and this this tree goes all the way to the top of the canvas so you're taking your branches and you're extending them all the way up a few of those branches don't extend all the way up and now you see me doing the tree trunk on the right so very similar the base of the tree is pretty much in the same spot as the base of the tree on the left so they're kind of level with each other the trunk is thick at the bottom, but it goes thin. This tree is kind of angling to the left. So I took that trunk and kind of angled it, kind of curved it more to the left. And I'm using the tip of the brush to create some branches, smaller branches. I do go back over the trunk and kind of wiggle my brush so it's not like a shape, it's kind of more organic. So the edges of that trunk um, have more kind of a curvy wavy edge to it and it's not exactly straight and then if you have room for more trees we can create a smaller tree to the left of this one but I'm using instead of the full width of the brush using the tip of the brush to create this trunk because it's a smaller thinner trunk but it also goes all the way up to the top of the canvas. Some of those branches kind of mix in with the branch on the tree on the right. That's okay. And I even have room for another little tree back here using just the tip of the brush. So this is thinner, this might be further away, kind of goes off the canvas a little bit. This one over here on the right, I have room for another tree using the tip of the brush to create that long vertical line and then we're going to start adding color to these trees so if you wanted to simplify this painting you don't have to add all the brown and highlighting but the highlight of these trees really help this painting to pop so I am going to take my bright brush mix my brown so the burnt umber with some white to make it kind of a lighter brown I'm going to go back over my tree trunks, go back over everything I just painted with this brown, but I don't want to paint over all of it. I want that black to kind of blend with it. It still should be very dark, but it's giving it more of a brown color. And I'm just kind of loosely painting in vertical strokes, leaving a lot of that black still showing through. That'll create some of the texture in the tree if you leave a lot of that black showing through doing it kind of quickly here um, grabbing more brown we're going to add more uh, white to the sides of the trees here just a little bit but I'm making everything I painted more of a brown color again leaving a lot of that black showing through my goal is to not cover everything that's been painted black just to add a layer of brown on there and then I'm going to grab some white on the tip of the brush and it's easier if you kind of hold your canvas on the side and use your brush just the tip of it 
um, think about where the lights are. So this tree, the light's shining on this right part of the trunk. So I'm going to paint white on the, this far right part to make it look like the trunk is blowing on that part. For this tree, I did it on the far left using just the tip of the brush, applying that white and gently kind of blending it with the brown that we just painted on there. I'm gonna do that with these smaller trees as well. Taking the tip of the brush, just very, very gently. This is more like a super light brown. It's not like bright white. I can go back in with more white and add another layer to brighten this even more. Just very loosely taking that white and brightening up that part of the tree to make it look like our lights are going to be glowing and hitting that side of the tree so that we can see those trees. They're still dark because it's a nighttime painting, but applying this bright light to the sides of the tree and to the sides of some of the branches. Um, if you find that maybe your trunk got a little bit too bright, you can always go back with your darker color. So right there, I didn't like how bright that looked. I went back with more brown and just kind of lightly, loosely painted more vertical strokes in there. Um, to get that texture in the tree, you're just not over blending the paint. You're just applying the color, letting them kind of loosely blend on the canvas using vertical strokes. So I'm going back in there with more black that created some more texture in that trunk but not over blending that color. Next, we're going to add our leaves to the tree and I used a round bristle brush for this. This is a brush that doesn't have the soft um, bristles. It's got the, the kind of natural wiry bristles and it's a great brush to use for texture work, especially if you're doing um, tree or landscape type of texture. So I'm using Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and Mars Black. So we really want this to be dark and shadowy. The light's not really hitting that part of the tree. It's super high up um, and it should be dark and kind of contrasty. Um, it still should show up because this is going to be darker than our sky color. So you should still see the dark shadowy color. So it's basically a super, super dark green. And I'm basically just loading my brush in the green and the black and just dabbing it, creating kind of clusters of foliage, the leaf texture, filling the tree up. We want a lot of the sky still showing through. I'm just doing like horizontal little clusters of um, the leaves, leaving a lot of it kind of showing through. A lot of branches still showing through, a lot of sky still showing through. So just keep applying that texture until you feel like it's as full as to your liking or if you want it to be a little bit more bare, you can do less texture. Next, we're going to rinse that, set it to the side, and grab our four round brush. So we have a little pine tree, a little Christmas tree style tree behind our tent. And this is also dark shadowy. So I'm using the four round brush for this and the, the green and the black. So let's start with mostly black. And I'm just gonna do this as simple as possible. Um, kind of a narrow tree at first. The height of the tree is well above our tent and it's positioned to the right of our large tree that we did with the large trunk and adding a little bit extra water to my brush to get this black to flow. So I'm basically just dragging my strokes downwards, forming the shape of the tree. If you don't want to add this Christmas tree here or you're trying to simplify this painting, you don't have to add him in there, but I decided more trees the merrier and so I'm just 
letting that go downwards. Eventually I'll hit this shadowy area behind the tent and we don't really know where the base of this tree is going to be. So it's just going to kind of disappear in the shadow and I don't have to do detail work there. But I did go back with my green and I'm adding more green strokes in there going from the bottom upwards. Just dragging each little stroke downwards to create the pine tree effect. So I could have left this tree solid black like a silhouette, but I did the green on it just to add some color. A lot of that black is still showing through, but that green just gives it a little bit of texture. I did another little tree over here on the right. This tree doesn't look like it's taller than the tent, so it's smaller, a little bit further away, but also it's kind of blending in a lot with the dark shadowy part of the sky, so we don't see it that well. If you wanted to make a taller tree or make it more visible, you can put it somewhere else, or maybe your part of the sky is lighter so it will show up. And then, I'm going to do the shadows of the trees. So our lights would be casting shadows on the ground. I'm going to use the full round brush and the Mars black. Water down the black slightly so it's nice and thin and just paint like a diagonal area under the tree. And there, the shadows are going kind of opposite on each side. So this tree, the shadow's going um, kind of diagonal to the right and the two trees on the left they're going diagonal to the left and the shadow casts all the way down to the bottom edge of the canvas so just a very thin black layer of paint going to the edge of the canvas then I am going to use a chalk pencil to draw our string lights so our string lights in this painting are attached to our two trees and we can hang them well above our tent and above our pine tree that we did. So just connect your two main trees together by doing a curved line going downwards. And this is just the chalk pencil that I used earlier for drawing out the tent. And then we have the wires from the string lights kind of wrapped around both of the trees. So I just drew kind of a, a loopy line that looks like it's going around the tree trunk. So doing like a curved line and then picking my pencil up to make it look like it's going behind the tree. So once you've established where your string lights are with your pencil, you want to go ahead and take your round brush and titanium white and you want to go over your line with the paint. So a very, very thin layer of paint using the tip of the brush. If you have a hard time with the round brushes getting that very thin line, you can use a white paint pen for this step. So that gives you a little bit more control with the these lines. Or you can use like a liner brush, a really tiny, tiny round brush is helpful. So I'm just going back over with the titanium white, very, very loosely, very thin line where I drew the wires for the string lights. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint each individual bulb in. So we're gonna start with the yellow. This is that cad yellow medium. So I found a little trick with these lights. We could take our round brush and paint a bunch of little circles, so like that. See how I just painted like a little tiny circle? You wanna leave a gap under your wire between the circles so the circle's not attached to the wire. There's a little tiny gap. Um, but an easier way out of doing this, out of painting each individual circle, is taking the back of a pencil, so using the eraser, and I'm stamping my circles on with the yellow. So I'm dipping my eraser in yellow paint and I'm just stamping a little yellow dot below my wires. So the part where it wraps around the tree, I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just stamping a circle. You just wanna make sure you leave a teeny tiny slither gap between your wire and your circle so that we can paint the socket. Um, some of those 
the ones that wrap around the tree, I didn't leave much of a gap and that's okay. So you do that with the yellow. And I could have went back over those yellows and made like a second layer, but I knew that I was gonna go back with white. So the reason why I'm going back with white is to make it look like these lights are glowing. So in the center of each of these bulbs and this round brush in titanium white, I'm painting a small circle in the center. I'm not covering all of the yellow. I'm just painting a small white circle in the center of the yellow circle. So this is going to make it look like your lights are bright and glowing because that brightest part of the light is right there in the center, but we still have that yellow glow from the first circle that we did with the yellow. Next, I'm going to go in and paint the little socket. So on each of the light bulbs, I'm going to do one tiny stroke that leads from the bulb to the wire piece. So that's just with the white, a little tiny stroke. Some of those bulbs, if, especially if they're touching the string, you may not see the little socket. This next step, I'm going to show you how I did the moon. I almost decided to leave the moon out of this painting in my other, or my original one. I did put a crescent moon up here in the trees. So I will just go ahead and show you. So if you wanted to do a crescent moon too, this is how I did my moon. I found a circle, so I'm using the lid of one of the Liquid Tix Basics paint tubes. And with the white chalk pencil, all I did was I drew the circle and the little crescent shape is embedded inside of that circle. So I just took a piece of that circle and created the crescent moon shape with my chalk pencil so that I have the shape filled out. And then I took titanium white and the four round brush and I just painted that in solid white and then if you want to get a little more advanced you can add a little blue in there if you want different like color variations in your moon so I can show you how I did that um, for now I'm going to go over my tree branches and then when the moon dries I'm going to go back and paint my tree branches over that so it's going to look kind of funny for a little bit while this moon is overlapping my tree branch I'm just painting that in solid white And then I'm going to erase that excess part of the circle. If you wanted to paint the shadow part of the moon, you can fill the rest of your circle in with like the phthalo blue color. Um, I'm going to not do that. I'm just gonna have that be the crescent moon shape and we'll see the sky to the right of it. Um, if you wanna add a little bit of blue to this, you can just use a little bit of your phthalo blue. Just don't, don't use too much because then it'll end up being a blue moon and blend too much into the sky. So I'm just taking that blue and a little bit more white and just kind of mixing that in with my white. And then we can go in and back with our little round scruffy brush and do the texture 
um, that is overlapping our moon. So this makes it look kind of cool. It like, makes it look like that moon is shining through the trees. Just a few little pieces of foliage up at the top overlapping our moon. The last thing I'm going to do with my painting is add some individual stars using the white paint pen. So this is a white Posca paint pen, and I want to make it look like some of these stars are glowing, sparkling through the trees. So to achieve that effect, I'm taking my paint pen and making a dot, and I'm using my finger to smear it. So when you smear the dot, it creates the glow. And then you put another dot over it so that makes it look like your star is glowing. So some of those stars are glowing through the tree. I also went back in and added another little bright dot layer with my paint pen on the lights just to give that a boost of brightness, but you don't have to do that. And I'm just taking my paint pen and doing little clusters of dots kind of here and there. This gives you some bright glowing stars. I love the effect that it's creating up in the trees. It, it makes it look like there's some bright stars glowing through our trees. So if you don't have a paint pen, you don't have to do this. If you wanted to use a really tiny round brush and add some smaller stars in there, you can. You can draw some twinkly stars if you want. You can do constellations. Constellations would be super fun and personal, personalized in this painting. So I'm just going to town on all these individual little stars, add some brightness up in our sky. And this is the conclusion of our Let's Go Camping acrylic painting tutorial. I love camping. It's one of my favorite things to do. I love being out in nature. So this painting was very special to me. I had so much fun designing it and teaching it to you. Hope that you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.